Iran is open for business. President Rouhani is in Rome on his first official visit to Europe since sanctions were lifted and businesses are queuing up to sign contracts. And taking a bite out of its profits, Apple will post its latest earnings news, but will it also reveal sales of the mighty iPhone are slowing? Hello and a very warm welcome. You're with World Business Report. I'm Sally Bundock. Also in the programme, Sharon Jitt will be joining us from Singapore to explain why Ford is pulling out of Japan and Indonesia. But first of all, it's being described as a European business bonanza. It's the first official state visit of Iran's president to Europe, just a week after sanctions were lifted following a nuclear deal with world leaders. Hassan Rouhani arrived in Italy on Monday and European businesses are eager to get in on the tens of billions of dollars worth of deals expected to be signed over the next few days. Italian media say agreements worth $18 billion will be done while in Rome. They include an Italian firm building a 2,000-kilometre pipeline, steel agreements worth more than $5 billion, and a joint venture called, called Persian Metallics. Later in the week, in Paris, President Rouhani is expected to finalise a deal with Airbus to buy 114 new planes to replace Iran's ageing commercial fleet. And over the weekend, Iran signed a trade and energy deal with China worth $600 billion. Well, to talk us through this bonanza, I'm joined by Dominic Boca Ingram from Charlemagne Capital. Thank you so much for coming in. So... It sounds like business is booming, doesn't it? And in some ways, I'm not surprised to hear that, given the amount of time uh, companies and countries have had to get ready for this. Effectively, countries have had about two years to get ready since the start of the nuclear talks. And I think we're going to see this building over the next, uh, next year, next 18 months. Um, Iran doesn't so much suffer from a lack of, of money as a lack of expertise and knowledge. And it's going to be the firms that provide the expertise um, and provide the, the more modern way of, of, of doing business and doing things that, uh, that win the contract in the end. What about the sort of pecking order? Obviously, you know, China was straight in there, Italy, France. Where's the US and where's, where's the UK? And I understand Germany is somewhere on that list as well. Germany is very near the top of the list. I mean, Germany never cut diplomatic ties with Iran throughout the sanctions uh, <coughs> being imposed. Um, UK is somewhat further down in terms of the European pecking order and the US is probably last at the moment, although given what I said about the need for, for knowledge and expertise, I would expect over the coming years for the US to move substantially up the pecking order due to some of particularly their, their oil and gas um, ex, uh, exploration expertise. Now you're a fund management group, you specialise uh, in investing in Iran. From your point of view, just tell us about the potential because the financial markets are happening and uh, very transparent and, and very modern, aren't they? Um, the Iran Stock Exchange has been going since the 1960s. It's a very, very well-developed exchange with $100 billion of market capitalization. It's very, very rare these days to find a very well-developed, very big stock market that has been completely shut to foreigners for a few years. So we see a market that is on a price-earnings ratio of five times in an economy where, given the deals that are being done and the economic growth pickup, could grow at 6 to 8% for the next 10 years. And that, for us, is really the opportunity. All right. We could talk for a much longer, but unfortunately we haven't got the time in the programme. Dominic, thank you so much for coming in and just explaining the potential. And of course, uh, as and when deals are announced, further uh, agreements, we will update you on BBC World News. But now let's move on to the computing giant Apple. It's set to publish its latest earnings figures. And after the Christmas period, it's expected the company will declare another record-breaking quarter of success and profits. But despite that, the stock's been falling. Investors are concerned. Why? Well, our North America technology correspondent Dave Lee has been looking into that. Throughout 2015, any update from Apple was usually fantastic news for its backers. It was a time of record-breaking profits and rapid expansion. But investors may be expecting some uncharacteristically bad news from the bosses here at Apple HQ. After a blistering 2015, is the company perhaps showing some signs of weakness? After a high in May of over $130 a share, for the first time since October 2014, Apple's stock price dipped to below $100. And there are two key theories as to why. 
there's a lot of people that look at the uh, at Apple performance and the reliance that they have on the iPhone when it comes to revenue, and they're questioning going forward, you know, how much is that going to be a problem for them or not? Right now, 63% of Apple's entire revenue is from the smartphone. That's compared to 13% from its Mac sales and just 8% from the iPad. And Apple still won't tell us exactly how much its new watch is bringing in. The company's latest results are expected to be good, but they may come with a warning. That for the first time since its launch, sales of the mighty iPhone are now in decline. The second issue facing Apple is China. The company now makes more money here than in the whole of Europe. Yet with Chinese growth slowing, there's concern that will affect Apple's growth as well. If China falls, so does Apple. They've really bet the house on the China growth opportunity. Apple insists it's not worried. Chinese consumers are still buying luxury gadgets and the company only has 30 of its stores in China. So there's plenty of room for more. 2016's headlines will of course tell their own story. This year will bring the iPhone 7 and there's rumours of an upgraded budget iPhone as well. And the murmurs that Apple is creating its own car are getting louder and louder. It's the innovation happening behind these closed doors that really determines the company's fate. Because while Apple is no means invincible, it still remains very much in control. Dave Lee, BBC News in Cupertino, California. This time tomorrow we'll tell you how Apple did, what its news was and how the shares reacted. So we'll keep an eye on that story for sure. Let's look at Ford now. It is shutting down all its operations in Japan and Indonesia. Sharon Jit Lales in our Asia Business Hub in Singapore. Nice to see you, Sharon. Why is Ford doing that then? Well, they're doing that because uh, essentially they've had fairly poor sales and market conditions in those two markets. Uh, the company essentially said in a statement that it would close all operations this year in Japan and Indonesia as uh, uh, there was really no reasonable path to profitability in those two countries. Now, the move, of course, comes after rival U.S. car firm General Motors last year said it, it too would pull out of Indonesia and a number of other markets in this region. Now, if we take a look at the sales that Ford made uh, to these two markets last year, it really only accounted for 0.1% of the Japanese market and only really 0.6% of the Indonesian market. Now, I spoke earlier to analyst Simon Littlewood, who had this to say. Ford never made sense in Japan because if you look at the build quality of Ford cars, they don't compare with it with Toyotas. In Indonesia, you've got a, a, a strategy. You could argue, well, it's a substantial market to, you know, getting on for 300 million people. But the problem is that the Indonesian government has a policy of insisting on local assembly. So this favors companies like Toyota Astra. And Ford either had to get in in a very big way, which it made no sense to do, and actually start manufacturing or to get out. That was Simon Littlewood there, and as you heard him say, uh, markets like Indonesia are particularly hard for foreign car makers. Uh, in fact, Ford partly uh, blames the government for protective policies that favor uh, domestic brands over imported cars. Now, what's interesting is analysts also say that the 12-nation Trans-Pacific Partnership Trade Agreement in its current form also uh, do doesn't actually improve Ford's ability uh, to compete there. Um, but in terms of uh, the number of people Ford employs in these markets, they, they employ just under 300 workers in Japan. They've got about 44 dealerships there and they employ uh, 35 people in Indonesia. Thank you so much, Sharon. See you again soon. Let's squeeze in a few other stories. Deutsche Bank's South Korean unit has been fined $1.3 million over its role in the 2010 stock market plunge. A sole court found the lender guilty of market manipulation, said it illegally profited after Korea's benchmark Kospi fell nearly 3% in the final 10 minutes of trade. A Deutsche Bank employee was also sentenced to five years in prison for his role in the so-called flash crash. Let's look at financial markets very quickly. I'm afraid to say that they have once again succumbed to uh, the, the pessimism out there around the world about what's going on. So Japan down 2.5%. Uh, Australia closed today for a public holiday. The yen still fairly weak, but if you look at how things went on Wall Street, if these boards will move on, you can see losses right across the board, which then influenced Asia today. I'll see you soon.